Welcome to chapter number five in the book, The Teleos Man, and uh, series number five. And uh, this is kind of a mini series on The Teleos Man. We had, this is a, just kind of a nutshell peek at the book, The Teleos Man, uh, The Twelve Aspects of a Man's Life. And uh, you can also get this in DVD form where it's much expanded for what I'm doing now. So I'm just giving you kind of a succinct version of this uh, particular topic. And if you want to go in more in depth, we do have actually another book in addition to The Teleos Man that talks about this particular uh, chapter that relates to the headship of the man. And that is a new book we have out called When Leaders Live Together. So I think you and your wife, if you're married, would really find this enjoyable. If you're going to get married, you really need it in advance of getting married. Uh, chapter five and series number five, uh, week number five is on headship. Uh, I'll be quoting you some scriptures too in particular. One is Corinthians chapter number 11. Paul is saying to the Corinthian church, um, I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the wife is the man or the husband and the head of Christ is God. So in this particular verse, it shows that every single person is under headship except God the Father. God the Father is the summation of everything. All authority is resident in God the Father. So even Jesus is submitted. So evidently headship is supposed to be a point of release, not a point of subjection. In other words, it's not the intent of God that we should submit and therefore be suppressed or oppressed, which leads to depression. But I want you to understand that every man is under headship and every man is a head. The woman is under the headship of the man in marriage only. Other aspects of society, not necessarily the case. We've got a lot of CEOs that are women. We have presidents of nations. We have prime ministers that are women. But as it relates to marriage, the Bible is very clear that it is a gender issue. Now, if a man doesn't want to be the head of his marriage, he shouldn't get married because God makes it clear that there is like an accession or there is a line, uh, there is a linear uh, point of reference here, and that is God is first, Jesus is second, man is third, the woman is fourth. It does not relate to equality, but it does relate to responsibility because in Christ we're equal. The woman is equal with the man, the man is equal with the woman. But as it relates to responsibilities and God's divine placement for you, that God wants you to know and understand the reason why the man is the head of the woman is because it is the only institution in the world that looks like Jesus in the church. There is no other institution that is a reflection of Jesus in the church, not intended to be, but is. It's not just some kind of a pie in the sky. This is God's desire and the only desire he has, and that is that the church and Jesus would be replicated and reflected in the marriage relationship so that people could look at your marriage and say, wow, that looks like Jesus in the church. That's God's intention. So in Ephesians chapter five, beginning verse number 22, uh, virtually to the end of that chapter, uh, it is trying to make very, very clear that the marriage is identical to Christ in the church. As the wife is part of the body of Christ, the church, uh, or the husband, the church is part of the body of Christ. For instance, every body has a head and every head has a body, only one. <laughs> there is only one head. My head is in heaven. He's at seated at the right hand of the Father. The wife has only one head, it's me. Jesus has only one head, it's the Father. But a head has a body. In the Father's case, his son became the body incarnate in the flesh and the Bible says it was the desire of the Father, Hebrews 10, uh, verse number five. Desires by God are not offering and sacrifice, but he wanted his son to have a body. So consequently, the Father has a body, his name is Jesus. Jesus has the body, the name of the body of Jesus is the church. The husband has a body, that body is called the wife. We all are under submission to headship, which is our point of release. If a husband does not know how to release his wife, he doesn't look like Jesus. If he's a dictatorial head, he does not look like Jesus because Jesus came to serve the church, which is his bride. So we have a, an illustration in marriage 
that we must grasp it, understand it, and say that's what the Bible says. It is not a suggestion, it was a command. So, a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's the desire of God. I really want to reference uh, these two books for you, uh, not just for the purpose of selling books, but the purpose of lining your marriage up until it functions where your marriage moves in harmony and in unity, and there's love and there's peace in the home. If you do it God's way, it will succeed. If you don't do it God's way, it is not gonna succeed. God hasn't called your wife to be the head man. He has called you to be the head, not because you're good, but because that's the way God chose. So I want you to embrace it. Now I need you to read the book or watch the DVDs to understand the other aspects of leadership, how they are shared mutually in the marriage. I don't have time to go into it now, but you must read the book. Get your mind wrapped around the fact that you are called to be the head and your leadership though must be proportioned according to the abilities in the marriage. So anyway, this is an awesome week for you and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. I love you. As you know, I have a passion for men, the complete man, the man that is transformed by the power of Jesus Christ, the teleos man finished the man that all women want to have that man in their lives. We're gonna be having a men's summit. Now, this is a men's mega summit, a Teleos men's mega summit in Oxnard, California, June 28 and 29. This is an event you do not want to miss. You wanna bring every man that you know. Men, if you could be transformed, men around you could be transformed, we could transform this nation, but we're going to have to get with it. We are the problem and we're also the answer. I want to see you in Oxnard, California, June 28 and 29. Phenomenal event. Pastor Steve Abraham is going to be a coast pastor with me. It's going to be beyond anything you have ever seen or witnessed or experienced. Please be there. I love you.